listening to the Startup Scale-Up Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to create meaningful businesses and pursue their passions. My name is Demi Samande and I am a furniture manufacturer, best known for documenting my move to Lagos, Nigeria for hopes of business opportunities. And I'm sitting down with entrepreneurs from across the continent to talk about their process, the lessons they have learned and how to make real impact. Welcome to Susu. My guest today is Sukami Ola, a tech entrepreneur and a digital strategist. At just 28 years old, he started his first venture, Syracuse Africa, in 2012, right after graduating from Covenant University. Syracuse Africa today has evolved into a leading digital creative and PR powerhouse in West Africa. Over the course of the past few years, they have built and nurtured some of the leading market brands, not just across Nigeria, but across over seven African countries, Technomobile, Adidas West Africa, OPPO, the fourth largest global smartphone brand, to name a few. In 2017, he he co-founded Hire Free Hands, a venture-backed remote workplace platform looking to connect an underserved African tech talent pools to the global workforce. Hire Free Hand is currently in growth stage with an aim of scaling across Europe and Africa with his head, headquarters in Berlin, with operations across Portugal and the Netherlands, while their talent team operates out of Lagos, Nigeria, with networks in Ghana, Kenya and Senegal. Sukumi was listed as Forbes Africa 30 Under 30 Technology Entrepreneurs for 2018, amongst other accolades. Sukumi, welcome to Susu Podcast. Thank you. Ah, Thank you for taking the time to come and sit with me and have a chat. All things tech and more, I'm hoping. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So before we delve into it, um, I'm going to just share with us a little bit about your background. What led you up to this point in your entrepreneurial journey? Um, at what point in your stage did you discover that tech was in fact for you? And that's the path you were, you were basically going to follow. Well, um, I would say it had always kind of been there. Um, I'm not a developer. Can't write a line of code. Mm, interesting yes but i've always been surrounded by developers designers um like right from school so my my closest friends were all in that space and i sort of i've always been like a strategy person so for me it was being able to like you know work with what's in my environment and it it made a lot of sense um very early on i studied engineering in university so not exactly tech like web tech as we know it today but it's a technical field and um the, the part with the agency, that's Syracuse, it started out as Syracuse Digital in 2012, but the, the foundation for this was laid in like 2010 while still in school. So during the internship, the um, six months IT, um, for all engineering students, I actually started the company on paper. Hmm. And you just, with my friends running up and down around Lagos, trying to pitch to brands, you know, get crashing pitches and trying to partner and, and show people like um, digital marketing at that point was a thin and back then it was very novel Mm. and um, right after school got my first client started out the company by accident and what do you mean by accident you just you just be like oh i got a client what do i now do with it let me just build a company actually yes (laughs) like in in simple terms yes because the the plan wasn't exactly to build a company and to like grow it into something the idea was just i know how to do this thing called digital marketing and I want to do it for a big brand and I realized along the line after like convincing this client who happened to be Techno Mobile back then Mm -hmm. and Techno was still like relatively new in the market and like really down the perk the the pecking order for the mobile phone brands in the market and they said you know what we like all you've shown us over the past few months and we want to work with you and I had to sign a contract and to sign a contract I had to register a company yeah and and that's really how it started how did you when you did that? Um, you mean convincing them? Well, wh- when you decided you're going to register this company and then and then push forward with this with this journey. Well, it it sort of all fell into place because to work with them, I needed a company, and working with them, I had to grow it out. So it's like the company's already here. You are their agency. You have like a team of two, three people, and we started doing our best work. the The brand was growing like rapidly in the market. And we sort of grew together and we had to become a bigger company to also keep growing with, you know, the work we were doing. 
So it grew from there, basically. Hmm. Very interesting. So you're now in the tech space. Yeah. And you can't do a an iota of coding. No. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how you've sort of grown your companies. I, I'm assuming two are still running simultaneously, right? Yes. Okay. So tell me how you've managed to grow your companies without having to do any coding. Now, remember you're speaking to somebody who is not techie at all. I, 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 have, I have no... I, I'm not a, other than using my iPhone and sending a couple of you know interesting things and and you know using Adobe on my laptop. <laughs> I'm not a techie person. So explain to me in layman terms how you're in the tech space without doing any coding. Is it that you don't physically do the coding yourself, or coding is very much an important part of your business? Okay, so um, I'll I'll say you look at it from the angle of products, right? And products go beyond just code. So there's the, there's the user experience, there's the design, there's the code, there's the front-end code, there's the back-end code, there's the product strategy itself. And being able to sit at the center of all of this is really what brings it all together. And after you have your product, you need to be sales. You need mm. actual, user, you, actual users, you need like customer acquisition. So I'll say I understand products in that sense. And this is the way it happened. Working in Syracuse, and growing Syracuse, we started working for many brands and we started building our products for them. Mm. So we had a very high level um, intro into how products should be. And at a point we felt, you know what, we're really good at this, we could build ours for ourselves. And that's how Higher Friends started. So what sort of products are you guys building? Well, um, this is a brand product. So like brands have all sorts of products. They, they could build apps, um, mm. you know, customer service apps, um, e-commerce apps, um, whatever it depends on the brand and it depends on their need and their fit their, their industry what have you but we ended up building like quite a bit of stuff a lot of microsites um for product launches you know you build things a lot of um user engagement um applications and all of that so we had this technical syracuse digital back then the backbone was the design arm the creative arm and strategy arm so those were the three pillars Okay. So all three were equally important. I, I fell under the strategy side of things, but you're working day to day with yes. these people. Now, you don't need to know everything. As a matter of fact, you need to specialize. And it's the, it's the Thomas Edison approach. Mm. Like he said, he, he, he didn't need to be the best engineer because he could get you know engineers to work with him. Is that and, what you guys are doing? Well, that's what I do. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. So when you guys are in your creative when, when, I don't know is it your creative um I, I want to call it a cave but it's, it's it probably isn't a cave but what, what's the best word to use when you're in your creative space and you're trying to come up with new innovative ways of doing this sort of product designs and, and stuff for brands what, what's your creative process what, what, what do you do from the beginning through to actualization well, um, for, for Syracuse in, in particular, I would say we've gone through like the full evolution of a company because we were once a startup. Now Syracuse is about eight years old and we are now Syracuse Africa. That's crazy because you're, you're, right, so your company, this is your first company, it's eight years old yeah. and you're 28. Exactly. So do that's, math. Pretty, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. That means yeah. you pretty much have never worked for anybody else. Never. Well, I had a couple of... Um, quick um, internships and holiday jobs, but I did these ones in school. Yeah. And they sort of actually set the, the, the tone for what I felt a company should be. So my first real holiday job was in an advertising agency. Mm. And I was like, okay, I think I understand the structure of this business and I could basically do mine. Mm. So, so back to your creative process, yeah. what do you guys do? Well, there isn't a fixed system for the creative process and mm -hmm. it's basically everything and nothing. We are as flexible as we should be. Um, we started out like very wild as a couple of young kids, you know, everyone between the ages of 20 and 23, managing some of the biggest brands in the country and actually across Africa because techno spread rapidly as well back then. Um, and the, the freedom to create was basically what gave us, you know, the, the, the trust, the, should I say the fame? Um, um, at the, the very, recognition. The recognition at mm. the very early stages. And we really did not have any system, which was what sort of made us different. All of us had not worked in any other company before. So we're basically doing things the way we felt it could be done. If it means, you know, pulling an all night at the office, if it means everyone going out to party and talking, you know, brand strategy, 
and creative ideas at the party, or if it means, you know, everyone going, we, we could do basically anything, right? We could go for, we could travel, we could do whatever we needed to do to come up with those ideas that would make the brand click. Mm -hmm. And really that's all we did. And we did that for a bit and then we started to mature as the company also grew and, you know, more structure came into play. We got more experienced hands to come on board and, you know, shore up the team and, I would say it's 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 a now it's it's more of your standard although we still have the wild side to how mm. we do things in in Syracuse Africa but it's more structured we we have a process because now we've done this hundreds of times right and and it still works anyway mm, what's what's kind of what kind of uh staff strength do you have um so Syracuse has a staff strength of about 20 something people mm -hmm. right um and Hire Freehands has about 10 11 people Okay, but you guys are still, you, you, would you say you're still in your early stages? For higher friends, yes. For higher friends, okay. And and how does that, differ? how do you simultaneously run the two companies together in such a way that you are, because yeah. th th they're similar, but they're, they're also yeah. quite different, mm -hmm. aren't they? So how do you run it in such a way that you don't, you don't find yourself duplicating? They're, they're two separate teams, right? They don't overlap in any way whatsoever. Two, en two entirely separate. So how do you juggle companies. the two together? Um, well, I, I what I always tell myself is I do my best and I try to cope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, the the main difference is for Syracuse. Syracuse is a structured company, um, mm -hmm. an established agency with its own systems, structures, processes. So I sort of exist outside of it, and I just make sure like everything runs smoothly and efficiently. Higher Freehand is a more um, in infant-based, like infant-like start um, startup, even though it's not that young. The team, like, and everyone knows what to do, and we are, like, you know, grinding hard and pushing hard at what we do. But um, they are different in the sense that Higher Freehand is a globally-based company, mm -hmm. right? So the team is distributed across Portugal, Netherlands, Germany, Lagos, and we have a different approach to work. Syracuse works with brands on advertising and marketing in that sense so they're very they're very very different things but i sort of just i just do what needs to be done you know um it means maybe i work twice as much mm -hmm. twice as hard but it's it's also part and part of the thrill very interesting so there's a young person out there just l l sort of listening to you and watching this video and thinking oh i really want to get into tech i want to do something H how would you advise that they go about it based on your experience give us give them some free some free advice. Um, so the advice I can give from my own point of view, because like, like we said, I, I tried to keep it very real and I tried to remain very grounded. All I did was to try to do whatever it is I was doing to the possible best of my ability. Now, that, that's, that's very cheap to say. But when you look at it deeply, what is the best of your ability? You know, if you can still put in one extra unit of effort then you haven't done your best so you need to exhaust yourself on every single thing every single task every single project every single whatever it might be mm -hmm. exhaust yourself to the point where you know you have nothing more to give but you also do this with a mindset that right after this you have to improve on what you've done and and that was just a very basic mindset that set us apart very early on you know the, everyone knows this team is willing to go the extra mile. This team is willing to put in the best effort. Everything that's happened in the past eight years has not been scripted at all, mm. right? But I think um, in hindsight, which it's not that much, it's just eight years anyway, it sort of adds up um, because when you do things this way, you expect things to roll out that way. Of course, you need um, a bit of good fortune, a bit of luck. And I try to be really honest when I say this, don't downplay the effect of you know a stroke of luck mm -hmm. every successful person has had it but the the good thing with that is these opportunities come around very often for you to be in the right place with the right set of people and all you just need is a lot of preparation keep grinding hard even if the opportunity is not there because when the opportunity does come you will sweep it you sweep it away just because you're prepared and you work as hard with or without the opportunity hmm. I think for most entrepreneurs that um, are either starting their journey or currently in their journey, you can never underestimate the, the power of hard work. Oh yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a default. Well, it's the hard work that brings about the opportunity really, isn't it? Because without mm -hmm. the hard work, sometimes the opportunity 
uh, it can come, but then you find that you you're not in a position to ex- yeah. explore it. Or so to I, really, I, I can yeah. give I can give like a bit of context to that, and and that opportunity really came to play with Syracuse. So um, I finished school in like June, June 2012, and we were meant to go for service NYSC in November, and I was like, okay, that gives me like five months thereabouts. And I could use this to, you know, experiment. Basically, I wanted to get a big brand to take out one of my ideas mm-hmm. and execute a campaign, make some bank, go to camp, yeah. you know, come out, ball out, get a <laughs> soft, sweet job or go for a master's or whatever. But the thing is, even without any opportunity and without um, like a, a very clear physical image of what it could be, I put in like I exhausted myself. So I was going from point to point, door to door without any funds in my pocket, mm. just pitching ideas. And mm. it, it wasn't because there was an end goal in mind. Like I said, the goal wasn't to start a company, but I did this so much to the point where one day, one way or the other, I ended up in the same room with Techno. It wasn't mm. planned. I actually enco- accompanied someone to the meeting and you know, I got like five minutes to talk and I said like all I could say, and it's caught the ears of someone and the person said, you know, like, let's have another chat. And another chat led to another chat. Then I met the marketing director and I met, you know, more and more people. And they were like, you know what, we need to work with this guy. And even How old were you then? I was 20. So this, this age is not a factor really. It's, it's the value, right? It, it is the value, right? Actually, that that's very true. But then um, I feel back then it was easier because I had nothing to lose. It was easier in terms of the the opportunity and the the times or it was easy in the sense that you were just willing to do whatever it took well it was easier because um the older you get the more responsibilities you get so i was willing to experiment and and you know that's when when people say like always try to stay young those are the things they mean because when you're young you do quote unquote stupid stuff like that so you need to always stay young in that sense Mm. take on new things you know don't don't second guess yourself. The idea comes to your head. One with it. Uh, at the worst, at the worst, it fails and you learn and you become better at it. So that was my approach. I just went out saying, you know what, I know how to do this thing, and I'll basically I'll go knock on the door of a, of a big bank. Mm-hmm. I don't care. It's one or two things. The security lets me in, or they don't. <laughs> so if they don't, I move, and if they do, I find my way into like the boardroom. You know, sometimes people are just curious enough to hear what you have to say. Yes. And you're like, okay, this guy has some balls on him. Let's let's hear what he has to say. Mm. And um, the feedback throughout this process really gave me more confidence because it was like, okay, we've heard what you have to say. We, we will not just like jump in and work with you, but this is really impressive and we think you have something here. And for me, that was my, that was my return on effort, mm. basically. So I was like, that's all I needed to hear and I go to the next place. And I did this until it just clicked. Have you ever had any experiences in your in your in your journey or any moments in your journey where your age has been a huge factor, regardless of your efforts and your willingness to just go for it? Positive or negative? Well, yeah. Well, let, let's start with the negative because I think we've got an ounce of the positive already. But in terms of negative instances, I, I just want our listeners to just um, sort of learn from how you might have operated with that scenario mm. a little bit in real time though so, so just kind of give us give it give us the picture of what that looks like for you well I'll, I'll start by saying in the end it doesn't really matter right mm. but then i think i think i've faced a bit of both more on the positive side because i mean the 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 market the system is biased to young minds now and it's it's impressive i guess when a young person is like you know doing things that people in um, higher age groups would do but then there are also the the negative parts because you you tend to not get listened to very early on and i'll be honest i haven't faced too much of this because i tasted success really early Mm. so whenever i'm in a room people already know okay he's that guy Mm. and it it sort of works in that angle but then I, i understand how it could play from both sides but what i do know is at the end of the day it doesn't really matter. If you're a really old person in tech right now, you would also get, as long as you're good at what you do, and as long as your your aim is to be the best at what you do, it will stand out at the end of the day. Mm. So basically, let, let, let your work speak for you. Let your work speak for you. So, so give me, a, 
give me a, a, a sort of idea of what it is that really motivates you. I don't, I don't know if you can put it in words because I think even when I get asked this question, it can be a quite a difficult question to answer. Where does that motivation and that drive come from? It, is, it, is, it, is it your upbringing? Is it your experiences? Is it something you felt you were born with? Try to describe it for us. Where, where, where does it root from? Okay, um, that, that's a difficult question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the easiest way to say it would be, I'll tie it to my background, right? So um, I had like a very humble upbringing, nothing luxurious in any way. Um, my mom's a single mom and I have one sibling. So it's just been three of us like all our lives. And we, we faced a lot of hardship like growing up, I mean, not suffering per se, but you can tell when it's not um, as good as it could be, right? Mm. And I didn't really get exposed to the knowledge of this because she did uh, like her utmost best to shield us from the reality of, you know, of what life was until I was starting to like get to my mid-teens. And I was like, okay, um, I see the way it is now and I don't want this, hmm. right? So it was more of a, a motivation that I, 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 I tend to to say I don't have a flair for anything in particular. That's just me as a person. Because whatever it is I am doing, I'll do it like, I'll have a passion for it. So if I ended up actually practicing engineering, like um, electrical engineering, which I studied, my passion would have been the same. Mm -hmm. And I know this is not the same for everybody because some people have like, you know, deep passions and desires and dreams. And outside of that, they can do nothing else. But for me, it has always been a, a matter of you can basically succeed and you can basically become number one at anything as long as you're willing to put in the work. It's all a matter of work. And I think there's a saying that says like hard work trumps talent every time. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it might not be hundred percent accurate, but talent is always an advantage. But for me, that, that's what it was. And that simply morphed into the way I sort of grew into a person, grew into an adult. Um, I've always had, a little bit of an advantage, now a personal advantage when it comes to speaking and expressing myself. So finding myself in the agency s setting from the mm -hmm. get-go was, I think, like a an advantage. Like the stars aligned because I was good at speaking. I was good at pitching. It's easy to pitch when you're, when you're in like marketing work because you sell by pitching mm -hmm. and you're able to sell good ideas, bad ideas, as long as you're, you're able to like navigate your way with words yeah. in that sense. So it's really helped. And then falling into the digital marketing space exposed me to tech. I and see. then I was like, okay, this is also something that is like a, an associated advantage as well. Because I know this now, I've been in this field for a while, and I think I have the resources to take a step into that. Hmm. What I'm hearing you say, in essence, is that your passion is derived from a unwillingness to stay where you were yeah so regardless of where you where which direction you need to go in order for you to get to the next step you just don't want to be back there so you could pretty much like you said you, your career direction can change although you've chosen tech you're not bound by tech yeah exactly so uh, if tech yeah. disappeared tomorrow what would you be doing <laughs> let's just say tomorrow everyone just said tech is done for <laughs> well that's not something i've thought it's, about it's ever probably not because, possible no, it's not probably it's <laughs> definitely not possible let's just let's just say hypothetically that demi's making sense in this moment like worldwide hypothetically um, yes um at the end of the day i'm a businessman mm -hmm. right and business is business there will always be something you could innovate around you could like look into the market identify a problem it i i think i know my strengths at this point I'm not the best in trade. I'm not the best in, you know, your brick and mortar traditional businesses. But if I ever find myself having to do it, I'll, I'll do it like my life depends on it. But what would you do there? Any ideas? Have you ever entertained the thought of doing something else other than tech? See, let me think. Entertainment, no. Um, content creation, mm -hmm. eh, not sure. Podcasts? I mean, this sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could give it a go. <laughs> Podcast always a, a little bit of fun. Oh, yeah. All right, so you're 28 now. Yeah. What do you? Where do you see yourself in the in the next? I, I'm not even going to say 
10 or 20, where do you see yourself in the next 30, 40 years? 30? Where, yes. Where do you see yourself at towards the end of, and it sounds a bit morbid, forgive me, mm -hmm. but where do you see Sukomi in the next 30, 40 years? Is in everything you're doing now, what is it to the end of? Mm. So, um, that's, that's a very interesting take. I would say, if I were to think it up right now, based on, on, on the things I see in my mid future, I would like to be at a point where I can say I have a legacy and a legacy in terms of impact I've made. Right. Um, one, one thing that makes me, that gives me the, the most, um, satisfaction is the amount of people that I've been able to like be with, be in contact with, make an impact on their lives directly or indirectly actually. And the further I go, the the wider this this web spreads mm. and and i like i actually do enjoy the thought of the fact that yes you've been able to reach this many people and it's sort of like a, a growing or a moving target so okay this is this is your sphere of influence or your sphere of direct impact and your goal over the next five years is to increase it now this could be true you know giving people employment this could be true simply connecting people to opportunities because mm -hmm. because of the, the the pathway in which I sit or the, the the kind of opportunities I am exposed to which I try to do as well but I think that would be a very good marker to know how well I've done I, I see myself building a legacy I see myself building things that would also stand the test of time because that's the most important thing starting is not what it is seeing it through is where the real work is and you know Syracuse, like I said, is an established company. Um, today, Syracuse can run without me, right? I still am involved to some capacity, but it, ha it has its own management structure and all of that. And I would like to do the same for IFRENs. And whatever it is, I do after IFRENs as well. That's, that's really, really interesting. And I, and I think many people do um, have this dream of leaving this sort of legacy and, and, and stuff behind. Um, I, I, for one, definitely, I think everything I do is so that I have some sort of legacy and I'm very clear on what I want that legacy to be. But I, I do also wonder is if, is if you're sort of motivated by anything outside of business as well. And if you are indeed motivated by anything other than business, do you know at this stage? Because I, I do wonder if at 28, do you even know? Because I'm trying to get you to deep, start thinking <laughs> deep now. <laughs> Is there anything else other than the business end of things that um, that kind of just makes Sukumi who Sukumi is and, and gets you up every morning and keeps you going? So um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer from this angle. Unfortunately, business has been my life so far. Ooh. Right? So um, right out of school, I got into this and I'm still in it. Mm. So I really don't know anything outside of this. You know, I, I don't have like uh, this thing people call work-life balance because work <laughs> is life, right? Yeah. And life is work. It's intertwined. I don't take vacations. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> don't take vacations no go by please feel I'll free explain. to sip your water while i sip my tea so my my tea's actually been sitting here getting cold isn't it <clears throat> i was worried about that that gulp that you hear on the on the mic when you're sipping <laughs> it's so uncomfortable but i'm going to do it anyway mm. yes, go ahead yeah so um <clears throat> wow you need more no this is in my throat <clears throat> Okay, yeah. Um, where were we? Yeah, so, you know, that work is life, life oh, yeah. is work. So, for me, and now, this is not um, recommended advice, right? This is for Sukomi, right? If it works for you, perfect, you'll enjoy it. But I, I tend not to see work as a chore, right? So, they go hand in hand. I don't, I don't go on vacations, but I travel quite a bit, right? I can go on leisure travel or work travel, but I'm working regardless, Right, mm. because I can do my work from anywhere, and I whip up my iPad, um, I tend into stuff. Right, so it it makes sense for me to say it's it's all the same, and this is all I've known. Um, and you know, normally <clears throat> the the standard career is you start with you know little responsibility and you grow up the ladder into like more responsibility, and then you're charge of everything. 
But I've always been in charge of like everything right from the get go. And I had to learn on the job. So I've always been responsible for people, responsible for teams, responsible for, for clients, for customers. And like I said, I cope. It's, it's, it's all I know right now. So outside of business, what would I do? I'm not talented at sports. You're not uh, into sports at all? No, I'm into sports. I'm not good at it. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would love to be, but... <laughs> yeah. For now, business is everything. Yes. And I like it. I, well, I, I can tell you like it. But I, I can I absolutely recognize that in you that, um, you know, some people just, they, you know, they want to build this thing by force. And mm. it's like, yes, because I want to be recognized. I want to be seen. I want to be acknowledged. I, you know, I want to be known for doing great things. Um, and you can see the stress that comes with that mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. going against their natural, your, your, your nature, yeah. yeah, their natural disposition, and and they're fighting this thing and they're pushing it, and they, and it's not. You can tell they're not necessarily enjoying what they do because mm -hmm. it's such a chore. Although they want it badly, it's still very much a chore. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. can tell from your disposition that you very much generally enjoy what you do, and and I I think maybe I recognize that because I I that's how I am. Yeah. So I can I, I, I can recognize that in entrepreneurs um, quite early. But, you know, you mentioned earlier that you don't do work-life balance. Yeah. What balance do you do? Because we all need some sort of balance, don't we? If it's not work-life balance, there has to be balance in, 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 the, in the way in which you work. And what, what does that look like? So basically, um, if we could look at it from, this, from, this, from the flip side, even when I work, I, I'm living right i attend to any, to everything i don't um i don't like segment and like cut people off so i show up everywhere i need to be and and it's possible because i can also work when most people cannot work right so if um you know life is taking over my 9 to 5 then work is moving into my 5 to 9 <laughs> basically yes. so it's all it's all blended right um mm. i'm married and on my honeymoon, I was responding to emails, you know, and, you oh. know, oh, yeah. there's this thing they say, like, you know, you have to disconnect and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, but how did your wife feel about that? Was she working too? No, it did not affect anything. So it's like, you know, a few 10 minutes here, a few 30 minutes there. Oh, I'd love to speak to her about that. I don't <laughs> believe you for one second. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's cool with it. <laughs> I'm just thinking she's just sitting there going, if, if he sends another email. <laughs> she's on the program. Trust me. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. So very, very good comment. So let's move a little bit into the relationship part of the entrepreneurship um, mm -hmm. journey. And you, you mentioned that you're married. How long have you been married for? Um, a year. A year. So you're, you're still very much in the, the honeymoon period, which is fantastic. Yes. So how, how have you found that you're sort of, because entrepreneurs, I know for a fact, we're very selfish with our time, mm -hmm. especially those people, those entrepreneurs who generally enjoy what they do because our work is our life in essence. And nobody needs to beg you to work 24 yeah. hours a day. Mm -hmm. The only time you probably don't want, you have no instincts to work is when you're sleeping. And even I know that even when you're sleeping, you're, you're thinking, thinking about, about work. work. <laughs> so the question is, how have you, as a, as a newlywed, how have you incorporated the family life and the relationship life into your entrepreneurial journey and how is it working for you so far? Okay, so um, in my peculiar case, I would say not much has changed because it was a long relationship before the marriage, right? And we are in distance for now because I'm also all over the place. You're in distance. What yeah. would you mean by that? So she is in another country and I tend to go and come. Is that because of COVID? No. Oh, okay. That's yeah. just that's just your situation. Exactly. Okay. And uh, it sort of works. Um, and of course, now I need to spend more time than I normally would, which I try to do. But again, my my work, I've had the privilege of being very flexible with my time, right? So I can spend as much time as possible whenever I need to. And okay, for example, <clears throat> the fact that we've been in distance for a while means we get to talk on the phone four hours every day. I mean, even even if you have like a regular job, that's not something you might be able to do. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm talking about like, you know, four hours of talking, three hours of talking mm. every night. So I have my own sleep schedule because of the time difference and all of that. So it, it sort of works. Mm. Um, I feel these are things that will naturally fall into place. And for now, it's it's all it's all 
I'm actually happy with the way it is because really I, I expected like like a, a radical change mm. and all that. But I think it's been a, you you see the things you need to tweak along the way, and of course you understand that while work is life, it, it shouldn't replace life. Very right? important. So yes, everything is equally important, and you, you tend to make that balance. That's very interesting. You say that. Um, I don't know how you're doing a long distance relationship, quite frankly, because I'm married and I couldn't do it. So well done to you for that. And yeah. I think that just goes to show the importance of marrying somebody who is compatible with exactly with not only you, but with your journey. Yeah. Um, you know, your decision as an entrepreneur, like I said, it, it can be it can be a lot for the average person yep. because you are so dedicated to your work. It, it demands quite a bit. It's very demanding. And unless that person really, really understands that drive in you yeah. and not only understands, but is willing to go along the, the, the journey with you, it mm -hmm. can be quite frictional. Yeah. It can yeah. be like, there's a, there could be a resistance there. Right. Yeah. So what, what would you say to young, to young people who are, very ambitious like yourself, who know exactly what they want, mm. um, but also want that relationship. Uh, well, it is possible. But well, clearly, because <laughs> you're doing it. But the question is, how? How How did you, how, you know, if you were indeed intentional about it, how did you go about doing it? Okay, um, so in my case, um, we've been together throughout my, inter uh, my entrepreneurial journey. Right? Uh, so, I mean, like... Childhood same. sweethearts. Not, not really childhood, but like right out of school, like from the first year of the company, we were already yeah. dating. Okay. So the the growth and the and the evolution of the relationship and work and her work as well, as it's something that has happened over time with us, and we've been able, you know, it it, it does get difficult at times, right? Mm. It's not exactly all roses and smooth sailing, and you have to make deliberate, conscious decisions on both, as long as you consider them important you need to make decisions like that you use your brain to say how do we address this and how do we fix this and this doesn't only apply to distance um, relationships or distance well, marriages. I imagine it also applies to friendships it applies well, to family exactly, exactly. Um, close close friends are very very important yeah. as well so um, one, one thing um, that made sense for me early on was if we work together we become friends right so, you guys work together no, no, not not myself. And my okay, wife. yeah. I mean, myself and my colleagues, mm. right? We all work together. Yes, of course. So yes. the these people then fill up that space of friendship, in that sense. Yes. So there, there are always ways to go about it, and it's natural. Um, if you choose to go down this path of entrepreneurship, it it does have its sacrifices. You won't be able to take everyone along with you. Or everyone won't be able to move at your pace or in your direction, but there are people who will be able to, and the, and the goal is to identify them. So for me, some of my closest friends today are people who worked in Syracuse within the first two years. Mm. I'm saying people who we talk every day, and and that was the relationship started officially, and we've grown to become friends. And most importantly, because they shared my vision, I shared their drive, they shared my drive. Mm. You know, we we have a lot of alignment points, and and that's what friendships are about. Um, you know, even if you are married or you, you, you live with your significant other mm -hmm. and you are like an entrepreneur in every sense of it, I think it even gets more difficult because you're physically there and you're not there. Right? Yes. So for me, it's like when I'm, when I'm not there, I'm not there. But when I'm there, I am there, mm -hmm. you know, and I know, okay, this is the time to spend here and, you know, do everything I should do physically. But then... It does get very demanding if you're right here and, you know, you're up in the morning going after the hustle mm. and, you know, back at night and you, the, the work is all that your life revolves around and you're right in front of the person. And the person has the physical connection, but not the mental connection to you. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it applies in every sense of it, right? There is no easy way out, to be honest, and that's just the, that's just the plain truth. But it is possible. So I, I find that, um, especially for my journey, I, I find that the relationships that we desperately need, because I believe that relationships are very, 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 very important in every stage of your life and, mm -hmm. and your process, even more so for the, for the person who's chosen to go down the entrepreneurial path, because it's very easy to veer away, so you have to be intentional about them. You have to be. So I always find that mm -hmm. as, if, if you are going to go down that entrepreneurial um, you know, pathway, 
understand that it's through your work that a lot of those relationships will be built. I think the sooner we accept that, the better. When work and life is blended, everything happens together. It happens. In that so sense. your your coworkers who you're spending the most time with those people. There will be the ones that you're actually going to build relationships. Okay. Or at least people with the, and maybe even in the same spaces as you. Yeah. Might not necessarily be someone who sat in the next desk in your no. office. No, but you don't even have to work together, but people yes. who are in the same... So entrepreneurs, in alignment. Entrepreneurs are... It's easy to make friends with other entrepreneurs yes. because it does make sense. You, Your your concerns, your worries, your... You're, you can you can talk with them. I would actually advise it. Yeah, it, it, I, I would actually say be intentional about creating those friendships and those close connections mm -hmm. with other entrepreneurs, because not saying that people who are not entrepreneurs will not get it, um, because there they are those partners who, not necessarily entrepreneurs themselves, but they work and blend very well with the entrepreneurial exactly. life. But that's a particular type of person. Yes. And they're not that, they're quite rare. Yes. yes. So I would say that if you are going to go down that path, that, you know, just expect that you're going to be making a lot more friends with people who are sort of embarking yeah. the same type of journey as you. People and and, who and, and if you want industry. to keep some friendships, you need to be very deliberate about it. You, you need oh, to yes. consciously make the time because the natural disposition is to... You veer away. Deep, just go like a deep dive into work and don't you won't surface for a long time well this is why i said the entrepreneurs are very selfish um i i particularly went through that journey myself i don't know about you sukumi where you know you you, you know your your journey is very much about um th there's chapters in your journey right mm -hmm. and there's you know there's phases that you go through and i've i've gone through the phases where it's like work 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 because that's eight that's what i want to do right mm -hmm. now and it's so demanding that it needs everything from me and you know you have to make sacrifices and a lot of those sacrifices will be family it'll be friends yeah. and then you just find that oh, you've not spoken to mm -hmm. you've not spoken to your sibling in how many weeks yeah. mum calls once twice three times you don't answer the phone and when you do get to speak to her you're pretty much rushing off mm -hmm. the phone because you're trying to go and get this done yeah. or when you have these conversations you're having absent-minded conversations a lot, a and lot of you're saying yeah 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 but you, you didn't actually hear what the person said because you're thinking or you're trying to multitask yeah. um, and you, you can't give that person your all. And then, you know, six months, a year goes by and you realize, wow, I've only spoken to this person a handful of times. Like, I'm such a terrible person. But then you realize that you could even veer apart. And I think when, once I get to those moments and I was like, okay, I've really veered away quite a bit. It's now time to rein it in and be more intentional. Uh, so this is now my season of reconciliation yeah it happens in chapters it happen, like yeah, yeah it happens like that but you just have to be very intentional yeah. about it and then be very aware when it's happening um because of our the nature of what we do we can't all, we're not always aware mm -hmm. um but i think that also comes with a level of maturity yeah. and experience um of you making the mistake and then realizing in good time and then trying to trying yeah. to readjust as, as you grow you you also tend to like understand that relationships are critical and you can't exist without them oh wow well. yeah so you then have to like you know be deliberate about mm. okay i want to make efforts to still have like a social life i have a very good social life right? well yeah you, yeah, <laughs> you techie people tend to don't you <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> quite it's, frankly it's, it's, it's part of the package yes you know, my, one, one of my favorite um speakers and um she's actually a psychiatrist but she's she's really 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 phenomenal esther perel i don't know if you if you come across any of her content she's just phenomenal um in terms of her the way that she sees she sees um, sort of relationships in general. And she one of her favorite quotes that she says is that the quality of your life is based on the quality of your relationships. And mm. every time she says that, I just get goosebumps because it, it reminds me of the times where I have been less than mm -hmm. and I've not cultivated those relationships. And it reminds me that no matter what you're chasing as an entrepreneur, you are going to quickly find that it's not go, it's not complete unless you have those really important people to share it with. Yeah. You know? 100%. So it, it's yeah, so it's it's really really powerful and, and it's it's definitely a great journey. I don't know how you feel about your journey so far. That's why I asked you what where do you see yourself in the next sort of 30 to 40 years? It's interesting. 
it's really it's, interesting. It, it's very, 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 very interesting, yeah. isn't it? So I've asked you about the future. <coughs> what are the things that you want to do in the nearer future with your with your process? Well, um, for now, I'm like fully focused on higher free hands. It's it's in that stage where like everything is coming at you like really fast mm. and you know you're growing you have to grow fast you have to you know acquire customers fast you have to everything is happening like really really quick and it's it's taking a lot of attention and a lot of time um i have friends is distributed across multiple countries so there's a lot more traveling mm. um than than usual as 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 you know i wasn't like initially around yes. for but um, my goal is over the next four to five years to grow it into like a f- proper enduring company to get it beyond just a regular startup. Yes. Right? Um, I have friends as, as, as a vision to make like massive impact. And connecting. that's Pan-African? Is that a Pan-African project yeah. or is yeah. it just... So, so the idea is, you know, African talent, mm-hmm. we're connecting them to the global workforce, taking advantage of remote work. Right. Okay. And that's the, that's the basic summary. It, go, it gets like really technical, but... Um, for 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 simplicity that's what it is and that's that sounds easy in a sentence but when you think about it it's 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 huge Mm. because well we've learned that um i think you i think you guys have probably known this a lot longer than we have been in the tech space but um you know covid has definitely yes you know a lot of things and and in africa in almost every african country we have an unemployment crisis and it's not going anywhere. And at the same time, the rate of population growth on this continent is in, quote unquote, the wrong direction. So there is an unemployment crisis already and the population is only growing faster and faster. And what did they say? By 2050, we're going to be like number two or something. 2035, 15 years. Wow. Right. So it, it's it, when you think about it on, on that aspect, it's, it's scary. And, you know, anything you could do to lessen the negative impact of the way the statistics are yes. in, in what direction they are headed would 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 really do a lot so we have a very big mandate on our hands and the, the 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 advantage with it is there is the huge demand and and the huge demand and the big opportunity on how to like at least contribute our part to solving this problem and we are figuring out innovative ways to make it happen that's, that sounds very exciting. Yeah. It sounds very exciting because of the lot. I know that a lot of the conversations that we have at the moment around this very, very same issue mm-hmm. um, is paramount, even for Nigeria as a whole. Um, talk close of the other African countries oh, yeah. um, who are also in the mix. But I think for us, the next few years, where, where do you see the next few years for Nigeria in, in terms of the entrepreneurial um sort of landscape oh i think i think it's very positive right now i mean and and it has been for like a few years Um, the 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 standard nigerian spirit is entrepreneurial by default yes i agree whether you're a business person or not even if you have a nine to five job you're entrepreneurial in your thinking Mm. and and i think it's part of the or it's an outcome of the system where you know the infrastructure the silver lining of the system yeah the infrastructure doesn't exist you know you can't really bank on the government for anything you you have no one but yourself Mm-hmm. So you're born into an environment where everything you everything that happens to you is by how hard you can work. So it's it's natural, and that's why when you see Nigerians in other systems in other countries, they excel. Like they shoot right up because yeah. the the approach to work, the approach to life. They've all, they've been trained to. Yeah, you've you've been you've been taken through the furnace already. Yeah. You know, so it's by default. It's just like the way we drive. Like if you can drive in Lagos, you can drive anywhere else because well, the way we drive here is something If you can else. drive in Lagos, you can probably do Formula 1. No, to be honest, right? So it, <laughs> if it's, you if you had the back end, you can probably excel yeah. in Formula 1. So so it's like it's like extreme training and and it creates this this positive advantage where you have a lot of entrepreneurs coming in you have a lot of people with a lot of ideas because there are a lot of problems to solve yeah and over the past few years we've had a lot of tech startups in particular pull through and now we're starting to see exits as well which is a lot of validation for the market and for the ecosystem so in five years i expect like more and more and more of this um we have really really interesting companies springing up doing big things um, addressing big problems, making huge impact. Yes. And in five years, we'll be in a very good place. 
Fantastic. So, Kami, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. I've sure. thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my session with you. If anybody is um, out there listening and watching and wants to reach out to so Kami, we'll be sure to add his details at the at the captions um, of this video. Guys, you know, I think that that spirit um, and that tenacity that you feel is burning within you, but you don't quite know how to... I don't know, unravel it, how to direct it, harness it, how to harness it, mm. how to bring it to life, how to birth it, whatever it is that's inside you that needs to come out into this world. Just know that the world is in fact ready for it, even if it doesn't look as though we are. We yep. are in fact ready for it. I just want to inspire you guys with Sukumi's story. Um, you're going to you're gonna do great things. Absolutely I great. Well, <laughs> I know, I know you're going to do great things. And I know that you guys also watching who are currently in your process and currently in your journey are equally going to do amazing things. And I am so excited for you. So guys, please just keep believing in yourself. Keep striving through, keep pushing through. And please don't forget those relationships because they're very, very important because they are going to get you that extra mile and make sure that you can fully enjoy the end of that journey. So there you go, guys. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed this. Have a wonderful week. And please don't forget to be extraordinary in the way that only you can be. Take care, guys. Bye.